Sean Woodley here from Locked On Blue Jays to detail everything you need to know about the Toronto Blue Jays heading into the 2023 MLB postseason. Question number one, what were the expectations for the Blue Jays coming into this season and what are they now that the playoffs are set to begin? Really, this has been a moving target all season long. At the very start of the season, the expectations were sky high, win the division high, flirt with 100 wins high, and it just did not work out that way for this team, despite some offseason moves that seemed to put them in a position to better contend for a division title. As the Rays and Orioles ran away early on, the Jays really struggled with scoring runners with runners in scoring position. It was just a nightmare for this team hitting in clutch spots, and they lost a lot of very close games as a result of that in the middle part of the season. And if you talk to me in July, I don't think any Jays fans had very high expectations for what this team could do, as it was kind of a mess of a season. They, of course, have scraped in. They finished pretty strong. And now that the playoffs begin, all the stuff that they do very well, pitching, defense, base running, that's the stuff that tends to play once you get into October. And so the expectations are clearly to beat the Minnesota Twins in the first round, despite being on the road for this series. And beyond that, I feel like anything less than an ALCS appearance will feel quite disappointing when you consider what the lofty preseason goals for this team were. Which batters are coming into the playoffs hot at the plate? Number one is Brandon Belt. He has been just awesome for the Jays in his first season in Toronto. And he came back from the injured list in the final week of the season with three home runs in the final handful of games. He is in great form and has been mashing right-handed pitching all season long. It has the best OPS plus of any member of the Toronto Blue Jays. Yes, he's sheltered from going up against lefties, but guess what? Sonny Gray, Pablo Lopez, who the Jays will see to start off the playoffs, both righties, both liable to be mashed by Brandon Belt. Kevin Biggio has also been a huge story for the Jays as he's gone from being someone in the middle of the season who thought maybe this guy doesn't belong on the roster anymore He's now become a vital utility player for this team and had a 112 OPS plus over the course of September. He's been very solid filling in for injured players like Bo Bichette, and he's absolutely part of the big plans going into this season, into this postseason, that is, for the Blue Jays. Explain the depth of your team's starting rotation. This is where the Blue Jays really shine. It's not just that the Blue Jays have incredible starting pitchers. It's that they have very different starting pitchers. Kevin Gosman has been an absolute ace all season long. If not for Garrett Cole, he'd be very much in contention to win the Cy Young for, frankly, the second straight season justifiably. Kevin Gosman rocks. He comes out with this fastball splitter combination that leaves other hitters baffled more often than not. He finished third in the majors in war for pitchers as well, per fan graphs. He's been great, and he is someone you can set your watch to if you're the Blue Jays. Following that, you have Chris Bassett, who comes in, not throwing very hard, but he throws six or seven pitches that he mixes beautifully all over the place. He should get the start, one would think, for game two, and he has been rock solid for the Jays. A couple of blow-up outings here and there, and he might actually have a ERA south of three, if not for a couple of those tough starts, including his very first start of the season in St. Louis. After that, it's Jose Barrios, who's been a resurgent man this year. Last season was really rough. Barrios was arguably the worst regularly used starting pitcher in all of baseball. This season, he's back to the consistent ways that he found in Minnesota and in his first season in Toronto after getting traded to them in the middle of the season. He was great this season, ERA under four, very reliable, a perfectly cromulent third starter. And then following that up has been Yusei Kikuchi, who's been awesome himself, coming from the left side, he throws very hard, and he's just left other teams with a lot of questions unanswered when it comes to how to solve Yusei Kikuchi. He was very volatile last year as well, didn't seem like he really had a place in this rotation, but the Jays coaching staff has really figured things out with Yusei Kikuchi, and he himself has figured it out. He's a great fourth option for the Jays to have. And that doesn't even mention Hyunjin Ryu, who has been really fun and actually quite useful for the Jays since coming back from Tommy John surgery. And of course, the big elephant in the room is Alec Manoa, the open day starter for the Blue Jays who won't even be on the playoff roster and has been shut down for the season after a nightmare campaign. This is a deep team with starting pitching and they could actually be deeper which is kind of crazy. Why is the Jays bullpen good enough to win the World Series? This is really the thing that I think differentiates the Jays from previous versions of this team dating back all the way to 2015. 
you think of some of the best teams in the playoffs and they sport these really deep bullpens with scary dudes coming out time after time. And now this team actually has that. Jordan Romano has been one of the best closers in baseball for a couple of seasons. ERA under three. Yeah, he's liable once in a while to have a bit of a rough outing, get in some trouble, get some guys on the base pass, but he has been awesome shutting games down for the Jays all year. Jordan Hicks was a massive addition at the deadline. Having a dude who can throw 102 regularly is just a really nice thing to have and a pretty fun thing to watch if you're a Blue Jays fan. Beyond that, Eric Swanson with his outstanding splitter has been fantastic. Yes, it's a bit of a bummer. He had to be acquired in exchange for Teoscar Hernandez, who the Jays could really use on offense right now. But Eric Swanson's been a great setup man, seventh inning guy for the Jays. You'd figure he's going to continue over that role. Tim Meza has maybe been the most reliable bullpen arm for the Jays all season long. An ERA well under two coming from the left side. He's really tough to figure out. Doesn't allow very much hard contact whatsoever. And then beyond those four, you have Jimmy Garcia. You have Trevor Richards, who for much of this season was excellent. It might not actually get any playoff run because he's been very, very bad of late. But you also have Jay Jackson, potentially even Nate Pearson mixing in. This is a team that has a ton of solid arms coming out of the pen. And Henesis Cabrera is another bit of a wild card guy who came over from St. Louis at the deadline, was not a very good at all in, in his St. Louis tenure, but has been rock solid for the Jays from the left side coming out of the pen as well. This team is loaded with bullpen arms. What is the Jays' greatest strength? And look, I've gone through the pitching. The starting pitching is fantastic. The bullpen is rock solid and very deep. But this team, to me, its strength is in not making stupid mistakes. This is a very sound defensive team. And that's what happens when you have Kevin Kiermeyer in center field most days, Dalton Varsho in left field filling in in center when you don't have Kevin Kiermeyer in center. You've got Bo Bichette, who's made massive strides as a shortstop defender. And Matt Chapman, despite a tough year at the plate after a rock-solid April, has been one of the best third baseman defenders in all of the majors for years now. You couple that with some really good catching defense. Danny Jansen is not available for the Jays right now, but Alejandro Kirk, in kind of a surprising fashion, has been a rock-solid defender as well. So this team just doesn't make mistakes on the defensive end, and we've seen time and time again in the playoffs, all it takes is one miscue, and it can cost you. The Jays are not going to beat themselves in the playoffs this time around. What is your biggest worry about the team going into the playoffs? And strangely enough, it's the big best players on the team in the batting order. And in particular, you start with Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who's been pretty good. As all told, he's been a well above average hitter this season, but he's not been Vlad, capital V, who you expect to see. Just 26 home runs this year after 32 and 48, where he led the majors two seasons ago. Just not been Vlad's year. A lot of ground balls, a lot of really hard ground balls and long stretches of just not offering a whole lot of production tough spots in running with runners in scoring positions where he's just not been able to come through he of course is still vladimir guerrero jr so anytime he runs into one you just kind of think oh he's back he's he's vlad everything's okay but an under 800 ops for vlad this season not what you want to see he's going to be a huge huge piece of whatever the jays do in the place in the playoffs whether it's good or bad if he's hitting the jays are very difficult to beat and how far in the postseason will this team go? I think they have the juice to beat the Minnesota Twins. I'm not terribly concerned. Yes, the Twins have a great rotation, but the Jays arguably have a greater one. And the Twins all season long have been a very bad defensive team. Of course, things can go weird in small samples like a three-game series. But the Jays, I think on the whole, are the better team. They've played in the way more challenging division all season as well. And I think they will have what it takes to beat the, the Twins in the first round. Beyond that... It's anybody's guess. I think this team probably has the talent where they should fancy themselves a World Series contender. The American League, while it is, of course, loaded with the Orioles and the Rays and the Astros, I don't think any of these teams are unbeatable. The Rays are super injured right now. The Orioles are very untested, and the Astros have not been fantastic all season long. I think there's every chance the Blue Jays get themselves on a magical Philadelphia-style run because of their pitching and defense. I'll say ALCS is my official prediction, but would not be shocked at whatever happens. They could lose in the first round. They could make it to the World Series. It would be very fitting of this baseball team to do whatever you think is the least likely thing as they have been wildly unpredictable, super maddening, and very irritating to watch all season long.